So if you could easily save a child from drowning in a lake, would you? Oh yeah, of course. Who wouldn't? Great. Now would you swear on it? Would you say, I swear if I could easily save a child from drowning, I would? Yeah, I swear. I would definitely save the child, especially if it's easy. Uh, it would be morally wrong not to do it. Great. Now, suppose now there are two children in two different lakes, and they're equal distance apart. The only difference is that one child, let's call that child, child A, is to the left of you, and let's say on the other side, to your right, child B is to the right of you. The only difference between the two children is there's one on the left and one on the right. Is there a reason to pick child A over child B? Um, and I don't know anything about these children. Like, I don't know one of them, or I'm not friends with a family member that knows one of them. No, so the only difference between the two children is one is on your left and one is on the right. Well, I suppose if I am going to save one of the children, it doesn't really matter which one I save. The fact that one's, like, further away or left or right. You know, as long as I'm saving one, that, that's all that matters, right? So you are saying that it doesn't make a difference that A is to your left or B is to your right. They're, the leftness and rightness of the children is not significant in terms of making the moral choice. No, it wouldn't matter. Great. Let's now suppose that child A is 100 miles away and child B is 50 miles away. Okay. And you know that both are drowning. For, for example, maybe you have some video cameras in trees by lakes and you see that in each of these lakes at different locations, the child is drowning. And you only have time to make one phone call and, of course, explain to the people that are near the lakes that there is a child drowning. And so if you make both calls, you know, the first call, the child will be saved and then the second call, the child will not be saved. So the only difference between the two children is one is further away from, the other, from you than the other. So is there a difference here? That is, should you call the person that's 50 miles away as opposed to 100 miles away? No, it's, it still wouldn't matter. It doesn't really matter how far away someone is. You know, they're still this, they have the same mor moral importance. So what you're saying is that the mere fact that child A is 50 miles further away from you than child B this doesn't make a moral difference. It doesn't impact how you should go about choosing whom you should save. Yeah, I still think it wouldn't matter. Okay, let's say the children, one of the children is really far away. And so instead of child A being a hundred miles away, child A is a thousand miles away. Does this make a difference? Well, as long as I could communicate the message on time, I mean, I imagine it takes longer to call a distance that's far away but as long as i could communicate the message on time and a child's going to be saved then i don't think it would matter how far away that child is it would still be of same moral importance let's say the child was on the moon uh, in a let's say space station so this is two hundred and forty thousand roughly miles away what if the child is on let's say jupiter for some reason this is in the future and jupiter is around 432 million miles away and so your choice is between saving child a which is on jupiter 432 miles away and saving child b which is um, 50 miles away from you and this is assuming that you can communicate with both locations yeah i still don't think it would really matter if a child's on the moon or jupiter or light years away this child is still a child, and so it's still the same value. So what you're saying is the actual distance between you and the child doesn't make a moral difference. The fact that one child, let's say child A, is increasingly remote from you, further and further away, so far away that you could never come in contact with this child in the future, it doesn't really matter as long as one child is saved is what's important here. Things like leftness, rightness, distance don't matter. Correct. Great. So I want you to consider one, another case before we kind of change directions a little bit. Suppose you are and a friend are walking along a lake. So you and a buddy of yours or a friend of yours are walking along a lake and you see a child in one of the lakes or one side of the lake drowning. And let's call this one child, child A. And at the other end of the lake, there is also a child, child B, and child B is drowning. 
Neither of you are capable of reaching both of the children by swimming to the children. There doesn't seem to be anyone around that you can call. And so the only option it looks like is there is a rickety boat nearby. And this boat can only handle one individual, so either you or your friend. So you say to yourself, well, if I take the boat, I'm going to save child A. And if you take the boat, you're going to save child B. And so there's two children to be saved, but only one of you can act here. Only one of you can hop into the boat and save the child. There's simply not enough time for you to save both children. So the question is, does it make a moral difference if you do not act and let your friend act and save the child? Now, obviously, it's going to make maybe a practical difference. You might win the accolades and fanfare of saving a child if you decide to act. And your friend might win the accolades and fanfare if your friend decides to act. But from a moral point of view, it doesn't matter if you act or not act as long as one child is saved. Are the chances of one of us, either me or my friend, saving the either child impacted by whoever who tries? Like if I do it, am I going to be more likely to save the child than my friend or does it matter? Yeah, so neither of you are better than the other at, I don't know, driving boats or swimming or anything like that. There isn't, if you act, it doesn't make it more likely that the child will be saved as opposed to your friend. So there's an equal probability in both cases. I mean, well, I suppose if both options lead to a child being saved, I would say that it doesn't really matter if I'm the one doing the saving or my friend is doing the saving. Like, I would obviously want to be the person doing the saving because... That means I'm going to get the fame, but I guess from like a moral point of view, it, it doesn't really matter. So what you're saying is that it doesn't make a moral difference that you decide to act or not act. What matters is, is the child is saved. So if you, it's equally good if you act or if you not act in this situation. Yeah. Great. So I wanted to kind of take a little bit of a tangent here and I want to ask, well, now what makes a sentence true? I guess reality makes it true. So you'd say if a sentence is about the world rather than um, true in virtue of the meaning of the words, you'd say then it's the feature of the world that makes the sentence true, correct? Yep. So to use an example, if I say there's an apple tree in my backyard, this sentence is only true if in fact there's an apple tree in my backyard and it would be false if there is not an apple tree in my backyard. Or if I said Donald Trump is six feet tall or Boris Johnson is six feet tall. This sentence would be true if there was a person named Donald Trump and this individual who was six feet tall, or if there was a person that exists that's Boris Johnson and that individual is six feet tall. There's something out there in the world that makes that sentence true. Yep. So one way of putting this idea is that if true sentences have truth makers, they have things in the world that make them true. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah, I'll take that. Now, I want you to consider what I'm going to call modal talk. This is, we often talk about how things could be, how things could have been, what things are possible, what things, how things must be, how things uh, necessarily have to be. And I also want to point out the fact that this talk is meaningful. Do you agree? Oh, of course. Not only is this kind of talk, this modal talk, meaningful, but we would say that some of the sentences that we use are actually true, just like concerning the apple tree in the backyard or Donald Trump being six feet tall. A sentence like, I could have been one millimeter taller or one millimeter shorter, or I could weigh one pound more. This type of sentence is true or false. It has a truth value that we can assign to it. Yeah, absolutely. And I would ask you, you know, this kind of talk is, this modal talk is pretty commonplace. People use it all the time. They talk about how things could have been when they maybe regret uh, some action that they have undertaken, or they, they talk about how things might be, or they'll talk about the disposition of something. Oh, just the other day I was talking about this. I was talking about telling someone that I could have been in the NFL as like a quarterback if only my coach would have given me some more time on the uh, playing field. He just needed to believe in me a little bit more and I would be in the pros for sure. So earlier we said that if a sentence is true, then there needs to be something in the world that makes it true. That is, sentences need truth makers. 
Yeah. We also said that a sentence like, I could have been one millimeter taller, or it's possible I could have been a one millimeter taller is true. Or in your case, that you could have been in the NFL it is also true, correct? Yep. But consider that there doesn't seem like there's anything in the world, at least the actual world, that makes it true. I am not actually one millimeter taller, and it's hard to look at me and know what features about me are such that I could have been one millimeter taller. And you are not in the NFL. Yes, but I should be. So it's hard to know exactly what the truth makers of this modal talk could be, right? Yeah. And I'm telling you, it's a travesty. Sure. So given that modal sentences are meaningful, that modal sentences are true, or at least a group of them are true, that true sentences need truth makers, something in the world that makes them true, that there's nothing in this world that would make these modal sentences true. If there are truth makers, which it seems like there needs to be for these modal sentences, then they don't seem like they can be in from this world, so maybe they're from a different world. Yeah, I guess you're right. It needs a truth maker, and there's no truth maker in this world that would make it the case. So one proposal is, is to say that what makes these modal sentences true is that they are true in a possible world, not the actual concrete world that you and I currently exist in, but in some other concrete spatio-temporal world which we do not inhabit. So the idea would be if your sentence, which is that you could have been in the NFL if the, your coach played you more, it would be true if there is a possible world relative or accessible to this world where your coach does play you more and you do make it into the NFL or you are in the NFL. And what would make the sentence false would be if there isn't a possible world where your coach does play you more and you fail to make it to the NFL or you're not in the NFL. Mm, yeah, that would do the job, but possible worlds, that seems, that seems a little bit weird, don't you think? So I agree. It is kind of weird. You, when you hear talk of possible worlds, it strikes us as strange. But we seem to need truth makers for these modal sentences. Otherwise, the result is to say that none of these modal sentences make any sense, so they're either they're not meaningful, or it doesn't make sense to assign them truth values at all. But this modal talk is prevalent. We commonly talk about how things could be, how they might be, how they can be, and what's possible and necessary. Yep. And so possible worlds can do the job of serving as the truth maker for these modal sentences that we take to be true. Right. So even though possible worlds are weird, we posit their existence to account for the fact that we think that these modal sentences are true or false. Okay, so there are a bunch of worlds where my coach actually did believe in me and did play me more, and I'm in the NFL and, let's say, not talking to you. Yes, if what you say is true, then there is a truth maker for that particular sentence. Can I go to a possible world where I'm in the NFL? No, you can't actually visit a possible world. It's not like a planet which is separated from you in terms of distance. Instead, it's isolated from you altogether. <sighs> and if you think about it, there seems to be a lot of possible worlds. There are a plentitude of possible worlds because we need a possible world to account for, to be the truth maker for all of the true possible sentences. So if I say I could have been one millimeter taller and you say, yeah, you could have been. Well, then there's a possible world where I'm one millimeter taller. Or if I say I could be one, two millimeters taller, then there's a possible world when I'm two millimeters taller. Yeah, so there's worlds where I'm in the pros at like different ages too, or I'm at 18 and a half or 19. You know, I went straight from high school to the pros. Mm, yeah, sure. And we can also think about it with respect to the choices that we make. So if I say I could have had tuna for lunch instead of a salad, well then if that is true, it needs a truth maker. And so the truth maker would be a possible world where I made a different choice. The choice would be eating tuna rather than salad. So in order to accommodate the fact that there are so many possible worlds, one sort of shorthand for expressing this is that any way that a world could be is a way that some world is. And so we have a possible world to account for all the different possibilities that are out there, all the truth makers that are required to give an account of these true possible sentences.
Now, I want you to recall what we talked about at the outset. I asked you if you saw a child drowning in a lake and you could easily save the child, would you save that child? Yeah, I remember I was telling you that was, I would definitely save the child because it's easy to do. It's the morally right thing to do. And you were kind of, I think, a little bit skeptical about whether I would do that, don't you think? I also want you to recall the fact that you said that some things don't matter in our decision making concerning saving children from drowning in lakes. The fact that a child to the left of you, as opposed to the right of you, isn't something, a factor that matters morally. And the fact that a child is 50 miles away from you, as opposed to a thousand miles away from you, also doesn't matter. Yep. In addition, remember you said that in some cases it's fine not to act. What's important is that a child is saved. So you said that it would be fine for you to let your friend hop in the boat and save the child rather than for you to act. It doesn't make a difference in that situation who acts as long as the child is saved. Agreed. Okay, so now remember that for any way a world can be is a way some world is. Yes. With this in mind, Think about your decision to save a child in this world. You say you will save the child, and so you rush out into the water, pull the child out. Well, while you're standing on the shore, you could have made a different decision. You might say to yourself, I could have decided not to save the child. I could have gotten to my car and drove away and pretended it never happened. But if that's the case, then it seems as though what would make it true is that there is some other possible world where you actually don't make the decision to save the child. So let me see if I understand what you're saying. Since it's possible that I don't save the child, that is, I could have not saved the child, the thing that would make that true is a possible world where I exist and I have made the choice not to save the child. But now consider that if in this world you say to yourself, I am not going to save the child. Instead, I'm going to get into my car and drive away. What this means is that since it would still be possible for you to save the child, you could have chosen differently. Then you actually did save the child, except for it's in another possible world. Yeah, so because if I just watched the child drown, which I would not do, and I could have saved the child, then there's some world where I do save the child. So your choice about whether or not to save the child is only one concerning in what world the child is saved in. So here's one thought. Just like you were indifferent about whether or not to save the child to the left of you as opposed to the right of you, and just like you were indifferent about choosing to save the child that was 50 miles away from you as opposed to 1,000 miles away from you, and just as you were indifferent about whether or not to save the child, either by acting or not acting, like letting your friend carry out the saving instead of you, you might say, well, maybe I should be indifferent as well about whether or not to save the child in this world. Because if I don't act, I'm saving a child in a different world. And if I do act, then I'm not saving a child in a di different world. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just want to make it real clear that I would save the child. I just want you to know that. Because the overriding theme for a lot of these decisions that you've made is that as long as a child is saved is all that matters. It doesn't matter the relative position, doesn't matter the distance, it doesn't matter whether you act or don't act, and you might extend it even one step further to say it doesn't matter if the child is saved in this world rather than the other world. As long as a child is saved is all that matters. Oh, I think you have me kind of in a jam here because on the one hand, I do want to say that like the sentence is that I could have been in the NFL is true and I do need something to make that true. And so these possible worlds, mm, they would actually make it true. But on the other hand, I don't want to say that it, I could be indifferent about saving this child. I want to say that um, you should save the child in this world. I agree. I find it kind of strange, but you, I want to know what you think. What is the moral reason why you should save a child in this world rather than some other world? And whatever your decision is, how does that decision bear upon the other cases? If you say that it's important to save children in this world rather than some other world, 
then how does this bear upon your previous statement concerning distance? Is it now important for you to save children that are closer to you or be concerned about the welfare of individuals closer to you rather than further away? Not practically, but morally. The other thing I would say is that perhaps the issue is with this accounting for the truth makers of modal talk in terms of possible worlds. Perhaps this is the real problem. But if it's the problem and you want to reject the existence of possible worlds to account for the truth values of modal talk, then you're going to need an alternative. You could, of course, say that all modal talk is meaningless. So when anyone talks about how things, what things are possible or necessary is just gibberish. Or you could say that it just doesn't have a truth value. Or you could try to account for it in a different way without appealing to the existence of these possible worlds.